to First Impression Friday. This is so exciting. This is Simplicity's new fall collection. Um, if you are new to the First Impression Friday series, this is where I review an entire sewing pattern collection. We talk about fit, fabrication, overall design, um, and just have a really fun time kind of geeking out over new sewing patterns. So let's jump right in. All right. I am so ready for fall. I'm not sure about you guys. We had a taste of, well, it was like low eighties, <laughs> which isn't very cool weather at all, but it's much better than the 90 high nineties we've been having. And it just made me crave all of these cute dresses, fall fabrics, a sweater, maybe. Um, so I'm excited to see what Simplicity has for us. The very first pattern is a Mrs. Midi wrap dress. I'm getting full on 1970s. I don't know if I'm like too much submerged into the whole Taylor Swift's Midnight's Mayhem, everything that's going on if you're a Swifty you know what I'm talking about, but I might start just seeing 70s aesthetic everywhere. <laughs> so forgive me if I do that. But this pattern, I mean, it's not just me, right? It looks like something the lead singers of Fleetwood Mac would wear or something like that, right? This is a self tie front bodice dress that has sleeve variations. View A has flare short sleeves with gathers. View B and C have ruffles and long sleeves with gathered shoulders and cuffs. Let's take a look at the photos here. So as they said, we've got a wrap. We've got set in sleeves with the, it looks like they're set in regularly. No gathers at the cap, but there are gathers at the cuff. Kind of a blousey um, sleeve here. And that all goes into what looks to be like a double casing. This looks like two casings, right? There's four stitch lines. But then I think that this tie goes through the middle. So are these elastic and then the tie goes through the middle of them? That's kind of unique and different. Then we have our full skirt with ruffling detail, two tiers, ruffles on each. Again, a major fabric hog. We've been seeing a lot of um, patterns that take up a lot of fabric here lately. I'm not sure what that's about, but this one has a um, handkerchief hem. It has forward shoulders with a little gathering detail there. And then this is the short flutter sleeve, but that sleeve does have gathers in it. Oh, this is interesting. That's not what the model's wearing, right? Hold on, let me go back. Maybe it might have that handkerchief hem on both. How interesting is that? What is this like to sew? I can't imagine that being a whole lot of fun. Certainly you could just chop this off, chop off the little pointy part and just have a straight hem. That won't be difficult at all. Oh, there's a cute little mini version. I really like this. Here's the back. It's just a pull on dress. I think that's one of the other things. Well, it's not a pull on, it's a wrap. Like you put it on like a robe. Oh, here are the gathers. You can see them on the sleeve cap now. Um, but just easy to put on, easy to wear couple buttons on the cuff. I will say this sleeve is a little long, even for the model who more often than not has longer limbs than the average bear. But I also think it's because this is kind of falling off her shoulder. So as I always say with fitting, start at the top. Don't just start shortening sleeves. Keep going up and up and up and up and see if maybe the issue is that this shoulder seam is too long. If you take this in to where it's probably supposed to hit, gosh, maybe even like on this side, it looks like it's right about here on her shoulder, then the sleeve might fit properly. Always, always start at the top with your fitting. All right, there are all of our views. We don't get a ton of variation just in length in the sleeve, so not like anything wild and crazy, but I do really like it. Here are, this is the back of the envelope. So lightweight wovens, so batik, charmeuse, cotton lawn, cotton blends, crepe de chine, gauze, silky types, and soft linen blends, but they also say you can make it out of jersey knit and ITY. I'm assuming that's because it is a wrap and you can technically pull it tighter, but it's gonna be a loose fitting uh, knit garment. So you're not gonna get like the close fit that you would 
from a garment that was designed specifically for knits. We have all the sizes in one. That's not right. I will figure that out when we get back to the front page. Um, so you need, what does that say? Oops. Five eighths inch. I can't see it's too blurry. Some kind of ribbon, only three eighths of a yard of it. What could that possibly be for? Two and a, some odd yards of quarter inch wide elastic. I think that's for each of the bows, each of the rows of elastic. The short sleeve version only has one three quarter inch button, but the long sleeve version has that button plus also two additional half inch buttons for your sleeve. Okay, here are body measurements. Yeah, fabric requirements, four or five yards of fabric. Yep. And then finished garment measurements of the bust go from 37 and a half to 53. This feels very roomy to me. Um, lots of ease here. With the elastic and with the fullness of the skirt, you might even consider sizing down, especially if you have smaller shoulders, smaller bust, if you're like petite, short-waisted, any of that kind of stuff, you could probably easily um, size down. You can download my Fast Fit workbook if you want to learn how I pick my size comparing the body measurement chart as well as the finished garment measurements to determine ease and decide how much you want and use that to pick your size. Um, I'll have a link in the description box for you for that. But there are line drawings again. I really like it. I think it's super sweet. I um, don't know about this. This feels not only odd to me, but also difficult to sew. And these days, like if I'm going to go through the trouble of making this huge ruffle, I'm not going to add to the misery <laughs> by putting it on a 90 degree angle. I probably just chop that off like they have it here. But I do like the two tiers. And I do like the handkerchief version without the ruffle. Yeah, I don't know feels appropriate for fall. Feels like something I would reach for a lot. So does this one actually. I'm also like in addition to like long flowy dresses, I am really into like more structured mini dresses and that is what this is giving me. Um, this is a take on a men's button down or at this point just a unisex button down. So I feel like men wear them just as much as women do now. Um, I love its length. I love the volume of it all. I love the collar. Like I am here for this as well. Shirt dress is shaped with a corset style bodice, darts at the back and a mini length flared hem. Views A and C have classic collars. View A has drop shoulders and puff sleeves. So remember that drop shoulders and puff sleeves with bands. View B has neck band with short sleeves and view C has gathered sheer sleeves with three quarter eighths inch elastic at the hem. So we've got the collar, right? Which I think is a proper collar with a collar stand. Fun to sew. You've got the full button down exposed placket. And then the fun really comes in the volume of this dress, the drop shoulder with these pin tucks and the little gather, I mean the little cuff here. Next version. Wait, what? That's not the same dress as this. Does this have those seam lines? And I no. Oh gosh, we've got to go. We got to go to line drawings immediately. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, not to my cart. Okay. No freaking way. Where are I? Don't see those seam lines anywhere. On how did they do that? I'm studying the print. I don't see any variation in the print at all. That's not right, right? That, that the line drawings don't. Something's not right here. <laughs> My brain is not accepting these two things as one. Because even this horizontal seam is not there. There is no seam breaking this up. And I also do not believe that they are that good at pattern matching in their little, you know, sample room. What? Okay, well, if we are judging it based on this, oh my gosh, my mind is like a jumble. Um... This is much more interesting than the made up version. And these lines here, style lines are giving all the shape and gorgeousness 
that typical kind of oversized A-line shirt dresses are missing. This is very cool. Here is the sleeveless version technically because you just have a drop shoulder with no sleeve. And it also just has the stand collar without the pointed part. This is the one with the sheer sleeves with the elastic casing. My mind is fully blown. I'm still not understanding how this is that. Even in the back, the back had those seam lines too. Those are, oh, there's a seam line right there. This 1000% is getting made by me soon. I love everything about this. I'm shocked, shocked that, th that these are the line drawings. Truly, truly. Okay, so <laughs> suggested fabrics are cotton, cotton blends, and poplin. For sure, yeah. Any of those kind of mid-weight structured, even like a, well, it says cotton blends, but even like a linen blend, even like a, a rayon twill maybe would be really great. Um, yeah, some of these more heavier weight structured fabrics are going to be what you need to hold up all of these seams as well as the volume of the hem and the sleeve. Sheer fabrics for the sleeve of C. Interfacing, I think just for the collar probably, maybe the band. Nine buttons and then a little bit of elastic for UC as well. And then three-ish yards of fabric for the largest size. Well, they kind of all go between three and a half to three and three quarters, I think is what that says. So four yards and you should be good. Oh, you actually do need quite a bit of interfacing. So other parts are interfaced. All right, finished garment measurements. They give us these. I'm not sure that it's relevant at all other than comparing the, I mean, it's 11 inches of ease of the bus, which fully makes sense. Um, I'm just so excited that it has like volume and shaping together. Like you just don't normally see that. And for those of us that have curvier figures, you can't just make a voluminous garment. It has to have shaping here and there or else it just looks like a big sack. So this is feeling so cool and elevated and mature but youthful at the same time. I don't know. I just think it's the coolest thing. Oh, interfacing for this band too. That's why you need so much. Okay, that makes fully makes sense. Yeah, I just love this. This is added to the cart immediately. All right, now we have this one that they made up in velvet, which again is a strong um, 70s-esque fabric. Now we're going to look at this and not only picture velvets, right? We're going to look at it from all kinds of different fabrications. So if you're not a velvet person, I mean, velvet is not the easiest fabric to sew. It seems like it would because it's thicker and sturdier but the the um uh what's it called shoot the word just fell out of my head the nap of the velvet when you put them right sides together and it goes the same way just it's just slippery you know when you run your hand down velvet and it feels so soft and smooth it's slippery um so that's what makes it so hard to sew you need like a ton of clips and pins and possibly a walking foot and all of that jazz to execute velvet. So we're gonna look at this from many different fabrications um, in case your skill set's not there, you don't like velvet for whatever reason, um, but I do love that they thought of this from like a paisley velvet place because it is giving a vibe. And I'm always here when things are styled with a specific thought in mind. So this is a v-neck dress with three links and a flounce. Dress has shaped bodice and short puffed or long sleeves gathered to wrist. Separate pattern pieces for A, B, C, and D cup sizes. Okay, great. The last time we did a pattern review for, I think it was Vogue, um, and they had the separate cup sizes, but for a pattern where cup sizes didn't really, I mean, it always matters, but it, there were so many other patterns in that collection where having a separate cup size would make a big difference on fit. The one that they chose to do that for, I don't know. It felt like odd. This one, however, I do feel like makes a big difference because this is an empire waist, because 
cup, the cup itself, not only, it doesn't just necessarily consider the circumference of your body at your full bust. It also considers from your high point shoulder over your bust, under your bust, under your breast tissue to your rib cage. It, it creates more of like a cup there. Um, than it does about adding width necessarily. So that this having cup sizes makes sense so that that um, bodice can come up and over the breast tissue and it will hit everybody at the rib cage as it's supposed to. The thing that kills me the most when I see people in ready to wear that just either don't have other choices or don't know any better is when this seam is like up here. Oh boy, that just, oh, my heart goes out to them. <laughs> but we have we have choices and we do know better, right? Um, so you have this beautiful V-neck. We have this puffy sleeve, which is so cute. The Empire seam, which I mentioned, has this gathering here. Very sweet princess seaming here, which is what's creating the shape on her. And the flounce. So here it is in kind of like a line drawing with a print attached. This one also feels a lot more like a silky print to me. A lot more like a polyester, uh, rayon blend, something along those lines. And I think it's really, really lovely. It Now this one is like straight up from the 80s, right? Like I'm picturing what my mom used to wear to work. <laughs> and it was definitely something along these lines. Also very much like an 80s prom I'm picturing, maybe with like a different bottom but these sleeves were are definitely inspired from the 80s for sure that feels like a lot to me I'm not sure that I would wear that like every day maybe like a special occasion dress or something um I wish we could tell which version sleeve she was wearing but here's your center back zip the fit so far on all of these has been so great other than that one shoulder being a little bit long on the model of the first one the lengths here all look really good. This is coming down, and as I think the design is that the Empire waist scoops down to your natural waist. I mean, maybe it's a little bit high still. Like, maybe her natural waist is around here, but there's no wrinkling or anything, which is really nice to see. All right, there are all of our versions. I do love the tights with the combat boots. That's a real... Like, if I saw her, I would be like, wow. Like, she is such a cool chick. She has thoughts and opinions. <laughs> you know, she kind of breaks out of the box a little bit. She's a cool chick. I want to be her friend. All right, back of the envelope, we've got velvet, rayon, silky types, and soft cottons for sure. Um, medium weight netting for this sleeve head or organza. So I'm assuming that the velvet version is one of these big puffy sleeves because they're, it's short. It's a short sleeve. So I think she's wearing C, which her, although the line drawing does make these sleeves look very a lot, very extra, it didn't seem that bad on the model, right? Um, and then you need some lightweight fusible. But you are going to get some serious construction going on with this netting and organza. It's really going to help the fabric stand up and away from the body and give you that volume. An invisible zipper for the back, elastic for the sleeve here on A. The sleeve head, so this must be the organza. What does that say? Half a yard maybe? Um, and then we need two, yeah, roughly around two yards for all the versions. I can't ever tell what these fractions say. If it says seven eighths and not one eighth, my bad. Um, and then we've got our finished garment measurements. So the bust cups vary by half an inch, I think. And then the most fitted part of this really is the waist. And these fisheye darts in the back are absolutely stunning, adding to that um, fittedness of the waistline. And so the waist... Body measurement, 22 up to, and the finished is 26. So you still have four inches of ease in there. Um, but the waist does only go up to 38 and a half, which does not feel, I mean, the bust goes up to 47, hip up to 51 and some change. 
So yeah, missing that size 22 really does make a big difference. Yeah, so they whenever they do leave off the size 22, they're adding in the size 4. So for the petite girlies, for anyone who's like a preteen type, you know, younger body, smaller, um, the size 4 they'd like to see. So it's not less inclusive, it's just not accommodating the larger end of the size ranges. It's accommodating the lower end instead. Here are the line drawings. Again, these beautiful darts in the back, which emulate fisheye darts, giving that beautiful shaping both in the front and the back. Yeah, it's a well-designed little dress for sure. All right, next we have a slow internet. Here we go. Okay, you know what? I was just getting ready to say because they're accommodating the size four on this, I would hope that they would have a women's version of this dress, and they do. So that's what this is here. So you have technically a size four in the version we just looked at, and then it goes all the way up to a 38. So this is at the most size inclusive of all of the big four, for sure. When you have them, they do do them in two separate listings, but you technically have that, what was it? Like a 24, was it 24 inches that waist? Up to a 57 and a half, which makes much more sense to me. So love that. All of us, I'm assuming 99.9% .9 of us can wear this dress, which I think is wonderful. Looks fabulous on her. Again, with the bust cups, this is what I was talking about before. On the, on the model that's straight sized, even on the lower end, it was going up and over her breast tissue and ending right underneath at her rib cage. It does the same thing for this woman whose breast size is obviously much larger than the last one. And that's what you want in a cup. That's why having different cup sizes matters. Okay. So they gave her, I think this is the view A. Now, I don't know that I love the proportions of this. It makes her little legs look like, like I think we could do something to make her legs look a little bit longer. These just feel, the, the, I guess the boots just make it feel like it just has, she has little short little itty bitty legs, which I'm a, I know she doesn't because if that's her waist, then her hip is here. She has nice long legs. But yeah, here are the other versions that they drew up for the women's version. I do love the purple velvet for her though. Purple velvet, man, that is, that's a vibe for sure. Okay, again, now we have another Mrs. and Women's. This one just happens to be all in one. I'm assuming they have to put them in separate envelopes, something to do with the tissue, something to do with the volume of the dress not all fitting in the maximum number of sheets of tissue that they can have in one envelope maybe that has to do with cost maybe it's something to do with like the production like putting them in the envelopes the machines can't do it if there's too many pieces of tissue i don't know what it is but i'm assuming that's why some of these are in separate listings and others like this one they have them all in one, where you have a size 10 to a size 28, all in one. Now, remember, the last version did also go down. It has three smaller sizes, and how high did the last one go? Oh, and one, two, three, four, five larger sizes. So technically, it is Mrs. and Women's, but not nearly as inclusive as this one is. This sizing on this one here feels like what all of them should be, <laughs> dare I say. I mean, that should be the norm, right? I mean, that should be the new, the new misses. But what do I know? Okay, flared knit dress in three links, has neckline, sleeve, and cutout options. You B has an attached bra, I love that. Okay, so we have the little slit, but this is the same as that? Slit, why, hers is much more modest and hers is not. 
and then two different length options. I love that they are posing together so you can really see the differences in the length, possibly the slit difference. So there's one that has a little mock turtleneck, the slit opening, and then just like a slight little A-line flare to it, I guess. Yeah, there are two different neckline openings. That one feels <laughs> strange in a line drawing. It didn't look that funky on her, right? But is that achieved by a facing? I don't know. <laughs> it's like a window to my soul. Um, and then here it is without the cutout with a full turtleneck. Mock turtleneck, modest cutout, beautiful flare. This is a ponty knit, 100%. Lovely drape to those. This might be more of a jersey knit with the bigger cutout, still with the mock turtleneck though, longer length. There's the back. Now they put a zipper in this. Maybe, maybe for the ponty, you would need a zipper for a jersey. You could just leave that out and pull this on over your head. Te uh, test the mock turtleneck first and make sure that goes over your head. If that slips over your head, you should be good. All right, there are our versions. Cute, simple, easy to sew, quick sew, I'm assuming. Now, wait a minute. This, they didn't show us this version. Also, so that when it doesn't have a cutout in the front, they do offer a cutout in the back which is really cool, which technically you could do a cutout in the front and a cutout in the back. Nobody's stopping you from doing that. But they are recommending Jersey Lightweight Ponty Textured Knit Stretch Velvet. They are going to have a pick a knit rule. I wish they put on here the stretch percentage. What if I'm shopping my stash? What if I'm shopping in Joanne and they don't give you the stretch percentage there? You know what I mean? Like you have to test it yourself. Well, I guess that's why you'd have the pattern in person. So what if I'm shopping online? That's more of the appropriate analogy. What if I'm sh uh, shopping online and they only give the percentage of stretch and you can't, I guess you have to do the math yourself. That sucks. They should just give it to us. Um, okay. Uh, so notions, you need an invisible zipper for these. Oh, different lengths for different sizes. Okay. Then you need clear elastic. I think. For that opening, because B has the window to the sole opening. Um, C has a shorter invisible zipper because you're missing part of your back. And then buttons, also for C, to close up your neck. But you could also use hook and eyes if you have those on hand instead. So we've got three, two to three-ish yards of fabric. And then... I nothing super fitted on this. I would probably fit this based on my, oh, I guess it would depend on the fabric too. I guess probably bust or waist. So it looks like the bust ease is just uh, one inch and the waist ease is about, wow, seven inches. So yeah, uh, pick your size based on your bust. It's only one inch of ease because you're technically using a stretch fabric, right? So keep that in mind. If your fabric is super stretchy and you want like a really close fitting garment, this is not it. <laughs> That's just all there is to it. Can you size down and get it closer fitting? Even some negative ease in the bust? Yes. But I think you would lose some of the, I don't know, just some of the intention of the design if you did that it's not supposed to be a fitted tube dress you know okay line drawings again I didn't even notice she had this little angled sleeve because she has her one one arm is hidden and the other one is up on her hip so you can't really see it but it does have this angled sleeve with a slit this is just a turned back hem same with this one I could see this version with the tights and combat boots as well. Okay, now we've got this sort of very chic. Do you remember during the pandemic when Simplicity was only sewing solid color samples? <laughs> That's what this reminds me of. I'm glad they figured that out. Um, okay, so this is a Mrs. Dolman sleeve dress. 6 to 14, 14 to 22. That's their pretty standard size range. 
Dresses have long sleeves and different length variations. View A has fuller shaped sleeves with darts at sleeve hems. View B and C are A-line dresses with tapered sleeves and neckbands. Views B and C are A-line. Okay. It doesn't say anything about it being a drop waist. So we'd have to go to line drawings to see. Yeah, definitely a drop waist. Okay, gotcha. Just want to be sure before I start ripping this apart for fit. So you've got all of your seams are sewn, pressed open, and then top stitched, which creates like this really kind of, I don't know, like modern effect. But you've also got this plus sign here, which is very... Uh, it reminds me of the, um, oh, oh, it starts with an M, the, the mod 60s dresses, you know, that had the black, white, and red. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. But you've got what they're calling a dolman sleeve. It's a little bit of a raglan, to be honest. It's kind of like a combination of both. But definitely a grown-on sleeve with lots of volume underneath the armpit. This one has the turned back sleeve, long length. All right, here is the back of the design. Here is the sleeve seam. So the seam is actually really interesting. The dress comes over and out like an L. Your pattern piece is gonna be out like an L and then it's gonna to come to a point here. And that's where you put the two together. This one has gathered sleeve hem. This, well, that could have been the front too, I guess. With no neckband. Yeah, I guess maybe that's the front. I don't know. This feels like the front to me. So I'm not entirely sure for those of us that are pear shaped that this is going to make a lot of sense because we're going to have to make it based on our hip. And then our bust is going to have to be based off of that and there's gonna be a lot of volume in our waist and we're probably gonna lose our waists completely but if you have a straight figure if you're more of like a rectangle I think this one would be great for you or even the triangle that's upside down like the inverted triangle there's a short version okay here's the back that looks not great it also looks crooked now granted it could be because she's turned her head maybe it looks like it comes up and then it's like over to the side I'm sure that's just an illusion all right there she is kind of a mod modern take on a knit dress right so micro suede well it's not technically knit but they do recommend some knits, but knits that are super structured with not a lot of stretch to them. Micro suede stretch wovens, which really only have like, I don't know, maybe less than 10% of stretch. Wool types, ponte, double knit, scuba, all meant to be very structured, stand away from the body. Like they're really trying to enhance the volume of the upper part of the body, which is why if you have a, a disproportionate, upper to your lower this will kind of think I look I think it would look kind of odd um one invisible zipper two buttons for the neckline gosh three yards for a but then it goes down to two for b and c because you get to cut it up so much and then the hip measurement that's the closest fitting part of this so the hip is 32 36 oh really three and a half inches of ease that's not a lot especially if that means that in order for the for you to make the size six hip for example you have to also make the size six bust and then now your bust has five inches plus extra because i'm assuming your bust would be smaller than this do you know what i'm saying about being a pear or a triangle or any of those kinds of shapes and the volume on the top just being too much, too overwhelming. Maybe, maybe in this version, you could make the larger hip and then grade like many sizes to the bust because there is this seam line here, but it might be more trouble than it's worth. 
But yeah, here's our line art. All right. Next, we have a little cape lit type of thing. Oh, they're calling them ponchos. I didn't know that that was still okay. <laughs> um, but, oh, here we are. Pullover poncho in three lengths has pocket detail with hood or raw edged cape collar options. Okay, so yeah, we've got our groat on sleeve. It's just, I think, maybe buttoned here on the side. That's what's keeping the sides closed. We've got patch pockets, button front, and then this hood that I think is a single layer. I think this is the raw edge of the fabric here. So whereas this is all turned under and hemmed, I think this is a raw edge. That is a shorter version. There are buttons here, a different um, pocket shape, and this one feels like a lined hood too. That I think is the version the model is wearing. And then a much, much longer version. This would be kind of cool out of waterproof fabric, don't you think? All right, not much to it. Yeah, so it looks like A and B, the quote unquote hood is more of a shawl collar, whereas C has a proper hood. Now, could you turn this up and cover your head to run into a store if it's raining using the waterproof example? Yes. Could you throw it up on your head just to keep your ears warm for a minute? Yes. But it's not meant to really stay there, I guess. Um, boiled wool, sweatshirt fleece, fleece. C, you can also make in ponty knit, nylon ripstop, which is sort of that waterproofing I was talking about, and woven wools. And then you need some interfacing and some buttons. Alphanumeric sizing, small to 2X. And then, yeah, two to three yards of fabric. And very generous on the ease of the fit. Yeah, I'm not, I, you know, I'm not bowled over with this. Um, probably because I just don't have, like, a specific need. But I'm sure in different parts of the country, the U.S. and the world, for that matter... Some of you are looking at this thinking, oh, that would be so practical for this reason or that reason. I just don't have that in my personal life. So if this jumps out to you as something you have to have, I'd love to know, like, what purpose. Maybe I'm just not thinking of it broadly enough. All right, here's Mimi buried all these patterns down. What the heck? Normally she's, like, the very first one you see. But here we are. Uh, Mrs. Jacket and Skirt. So, double-breasted crop jacket has princess seams, zippered pocket, sleeve bands, snapped lapel, and epaulettes, which are the shoulder things. Slim above-knee button skirt has zippered pockets. So, basically, we've got, like, a moto jacket, double-breasted, and then also a double-breasted skirt. Very rock and roll. Very much, like... A moment like you're not just rolling up to target in this and not having people think you're going somewhere <laughs> like this is not just I'm out running errands today um, but you can mix and match these pieces and create some really really cool looks I think fit for Mimi is a little bit I have a hard time sometimes because I know that she's the designer and the model. And so part of me is like, these should fit her perfectly. But then I also know there's the other side where simplicity is maybe telling her, no, you have to make these without any alterations. Do you think? I don't know. It's hard to say. But if, if you're making these for a fit model, like for all the other patterns we looked at today, they don't make alterations to them, so maybe they don't allow her to make alterations either, which is why we get some fit issues coming in. The jacket looks pretty good. Her sleeves are always so long on her. I have to imagine that's a preference. Um, but this, all this wrinkling here is just a little too tight through the thigh. And that's also why you're getting this kind of bubble here, like a lot of pressure is being put on this button. So if she could have just graded this out even just taking out some of the seam allowance and giving herself a little bit of breathing room here, I think that all of that would go away. Um, but maybe she's not allowed to is the only thing I can think of. But yeah, wonderful details in this like military style moto jacket. Um, you have the epaulettes, like I said, you have the button down or snapped down collar 
um, with the metal um, trimming and then also these metal buttons and these metal welt pockets which is making it feel very edgy here is a version that what is it it's, it's the same no maybe it's missing the zippered pockets then there's a longer skirt yeah see how there's like just a little bit of fit issues through here but it is pretty freaking cool that's the jacket opened I love the volume and shape of it when it's open as well as when it's closed. All right, that's it. So this is A and this is B. I still can't figure out the difference. Oh, just maybe the contrasting fabric, that must be it. All right, so wool, rayon suitings, denim, suede, poplin, sateen, and linen. I do feel like when you get a Mimiji pattern, the fabric suggestions are always spot on. Um, and they never really leave anything out. Um, I think she's always very thoughtful about this and does a better job of this than any of the other designers at Simplicity. Um, they need a lining. I'm assuming fully lined on both pieces. Lightweight fusible. Um, a lot of notions. So buttons, snaps, metal zippers, all the things. 6 to 24 on the size range. The jacket is roughly 2 yards of fabric plus the same amount for interfacing. B has that contrast we mentioned and then the skirt is like 1 and a half yards roughly. Um, very close fitting jacket. The bust is 3 inches of ease and the hip is also two and a half inches of ease so personally I would want one of these that has a little bit of give to it stretch sateen would be a good option um but some of the and suede has a little bit of give to it as well you can find denim like with some spandex in it that would be really cool um but that's just for me because I have you know a fuller bum kind of like Mimi does if you are straight sized, you can absolutely make this out of a non-stretch fabric, no problem. But I think a lot of what's helping here, especially in this photo, getting over her like juicy, lovely, wonderful bum, um, is a little bit of stretch. There's only two darts in the back. There's no way that you get that volume without um, there being a little bit of stretch in the fabric. I'm guessing. This might be a micro suede, and those do have a little bit of give to them. Just a little bit. I mean, not not talking like a knit at all. Just a little bit. So, yeah, cool. Rock and roll. Fun. Oh, there isn't a longer skirt. That is the skirt. Okay. I thought she was wearing a mini version, and there was a longer version, but no, there's just one. Um, so, if you want to use a woven fabric that doesn't have a lot of stretch to it, and you have a fuller bum, you just need to start make this skirt for the waist, for the hip and then add a whole bunch more darts in here. Um, I think whenever I got fitted by like a pants fitting expert, I had six. <laughs> but that's just because I'm such an extreme pair. But don't be afraid to add them all. I think she, what she had done when I got that fitting is they got increasingly shorter. So they made like a stack like this. Okay, that's that. I know Mimi's gonna have at least another pattern, right? We've got a little skirt here. Oh, maybe Mimi's was buried in the listings because it wasn't a dress, and they do dresses first, and then skirts next. So maybe that was it. But this, look how cool with the little frayed edge. Skirts with side zip closure include asymmetrical and flared options in four lengths. Okay, this is going to be easy rating, absolutely. We have 8 to 16, and then 16 to 24. So pretty good on the sizing. For This is about as wide of a range in the misses category as you're going to see. Granted, they do go down to four, but I don't think the misses category goes up to higher than 24. So you're really only missing the smaller sizes here. And it's still categorized as misses. All right, so this one, I don't know how it closes. Is that a side zipper maybe? But you got this patch pocket, which, I mean, A++ for the pattern matching, but I kind of would have liked to see it maybe on the bias. I don't know. And then they did this, like, frayed edge, which is super cool. 
styled exactly how I would imagine it's styled by just about anybody. Close fitting top, some high rise boots. Yeah, I think that's gotta be a side zipper. So this is just a very plain version with no front panel. This one has a center front seam. This is the asymmet this is the one the model's wearing. Okay, um one dart in the back is definitely a side zip. So is this overlapping? It's the same thing as a center front seam, except instead of sewing them right sides together, you sew wrong side to right side, almost like a top stitch, and then fray out your seam allowances. That's super cool, but you can do that with any pattern you currently own. So if you have a pattern that looks like this, don't go out and buy this. <laughs> you can do this with this. All right, envelope back. We've got wools, rayons, denim, linens, and cottons. I will say though, not all of those are gonna fray. I don't think, especially if this is cut on the straight grain, only the denim would, am I right? Unless you cut it on the bot, mm, now I'm confused. Um, so just check that, I guess, at the store. Um, okay, then we have about a couple yards for fabric. The little, plain little skirt here is a little one yard wonder. Um, so that's nice. And then we've got about 33 and a half to 37. So three and a half inches of ease in the hip. Not a ton, kind of close fitting hip. Um, but still somewhat roomy. I wish they would have put the waist since that's sort of the closest fitting part there. Um, but yeah, cute, simple, easy make. And I think this one would really make, you know, a big impact. I think people would be like, oh, wow, that's really cool. Where'd you get that kind of thing? All right, line drawings are as follows. Yeah, pretty straightforward. But again, you can make this if you have something that looks like this. So don't run out and buy this. But then again, you know, I know we're all like, but it's just $2. I'm with that. I'm with you on that too. All right. Now we have a pair of trousers and shorts. Trouser pants come in two lengths or shorts. So that's three lengths total. All views have fly front and slash pockets. Uh, fly front with an easy rating. Yeah, I don't know about that. Views A and B have wide cuffs. View C is finished with an invisible hem. View D is shorts. Okay, yeah, that is a wide cuff, that's for sure. So, fit-wise, these look pretty darn good. Um, looks like they're sitting maybe an inch or two below her natural waist. Nice big waistband. It might possibly have some curve to it. Um, good amount of ease through the hip and thigh, not a ton of crotch issues. Yeah, these look good. This is kind of wild though. I, it kind of looks like she just rolled them up. Like they weren't intended to be that way. And she was like, my pants are too long. I just want to roll them up. It doesn't look intentional. There's, I think the long version. There's some in some kind of tweed or something. There's a version. That's the one with the invisible hem. Then we have our shorts, which still have, these are like Bermuda shorts. They still have a good seven, nine inch rise possibly. Let's look at the back. Okay, these also have welt pockets. This is not an easy pattern, okay? Do not be fooled. <laughs> That's mean. That's mean of them to do that. But you can see her natural waist is way up here. So these do sit mid-rise. Um, yeah, the crotch curve looks really good. Best fitting pants I've seen in a pattern in a while. In a while. And granted, yes, she's a straight size model. But we've seen some really terrible fitted pants, even on straight size people. So... Um, this gives me lots of hope that maybe if these are the foundation, if this is the foundational fit, you know what I mean? Like the baseline of fit and you go to make your natural alterations that you would normally do, you could get a really good fitting pant. Um, those of us that are, uh, pear shaped, let's, where's the, where's the back? 
Oh, we have to go to the line drawings. Okay. Um, we have two darts, um, one on each side. So you could easily add an additional dart and get that waist fitted really well. Do your crotch depth, crotch length, crotch um, the rise. Do all of those adjustments. I think you could have a really good fitting trouser here. Very promising. Okay, fabrics are cotton blends, gabardine, linen blends, stretch wovens, twill, wool blends. Yeah, all of your kind of like bottom weights. This makes me excited for pants making. Um, we have a lining for the pockets. Interfacing. Now this does only go up to a size 22. That's disheartening because that means a body measurement hip of 46 and a finished hip of 49. So there is three inches of ease built in. Um, I'd have to take, I haven't taken my hip measurement in a couple of months, so I'd have to redo this, but I would either be at a 22, possibly need to um, take in, okay, so everybody gets, every pattern gets five eighths inch seam allowances, right? So this one has, and each seam put together is one and a quarter inches because five eighths times two. So that's one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters. And then the center front gets a little bit funky with that, um, with the, uh, what's it called? Fly front. So we're just going to ignore that one. But you have three and a half inches to play around with. If you left a quarter inch seam allowance in all of these, that would leave, an, that would give you an inch. So you'd get three inches back. So just by sewing the side seams and the center back at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I could gain a body measurement of 49. And then that would still give me the finished measurement of 52. So keep that in mind. The seam allowances are there for a reason, not to just be chopped off by your serger, okay? If you're on the cusp of a pattern, Count up the seams, add up your seam allowance if you were to go for a quarter inch seam allowance, okay? Um, what else? That's about it for this. Let's look at the line drawings really quickly, although they're pretty straightforward. So yeah, we have, this is the one the model's wearing. There's a longer version. Here's the backs of both of those. Then you have your shorts as well. C, D, C, D. So C is the blind hem and D is the shorts, obviously, with a regular hem. And then you have the back of both of those as well. Nice. I do need some good trousers. I haven't had any like with a proper um, fly and button closure and belt buckles in a minute, in a, in a very long time. All right, so we've got a little vintage blouse here. Again, I don't typically do very well at reviewing these because one, I don't understand a lot of this terminology and two, they aren't ever modeled on a person. So obviously the fit on an illustration is going to be creme de la creme, but how does it really fit? Who knows? Um, the description on this one is fitted 1950s surplus blouses have soft inside pleats. That's what these are. Inside pleats, I think are just the pleats are done backwards, right? Um, side zipper and back zipper, you get in this way. And then you also, because this neckline is so high up, there's also a back zipper. Um, option includes three quarter sleeves with elbow darts, sleeveless with cummerbund, which is basically like a fabric sashy belt thing cut out of border print fabric or one shoulder with beaded trim and side zipper. So very fifties, very fitted, very like body aware, body, body, um, what would be the word body enhancing. <laughs> um, you do have these really nice fitted darts here. The pleats add the room that you need for your bust line. You've got the very close fitting sleeve. It does have the elbow dart to provide a little bit of movement. This is the sleeveless version with the border print, and then you use the same, well, they didn't. I thought they would use this fabric for the belt, but they didn't on the illustration at least. So you wear the top tucked into a big skirt, and then you put the cummerbund on top. This looks very close fitting through here. I hope that's not really how it is. 
There is the sleeveless or the one shoulder version. Quite lovely. Pattern cover. Here's the back cover. So cotton type satin, shantong, silky types, shally, linen types, lightweight wools, and velveteen. So they're, I guess they're kind of going for something a little bit more luxurious, maybe like a holiday look. Um, and then B is border print fabrics, which obviously was a little bit more casual. Um, zippers, straight seam binding, bias seam binding, hooks and eyes, two zippers, shoulder pads, boning, Maybe it's not as, as casual as I thought. Because B, the sleeveless one, is the one with boning. None of the other ones have boning? I don't know. And then beaded trim, and then the same hook and eye. So this goes from 6 to 24. Um, and two, three yards of fabric, roughly. And then five inches of ease in the bust. That's a lot. C, oh, C, because it's got one shoulder. Okay, and then they don't give us the waist again, which I think the waist is the most fitted part. Ugh, okay. Well, that's that. Here are the line drawings again. So the last um, sew along we did had a close fitting high neck bodice and they had a zipper just go all the way down to the bottom. Like you zip into it like a vest. But I guess you could do this and do a side seam and a back zipper, or you could just do the side seam zipper and then put a little, um, oh shoot, what's it called? The little loop opening, you know what I mean? Where there's a little button up here. And then your cummerbund closes with the hook and eye. And then the one shoulder only has a side seam. I will say, you guys know I've not always been a fan of asymmetrical one shoulder situations. I was at like a secondhand store the other day and on a whim tried one on. I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would, but I'm still not ready to like commit to making one myself. You know what I mean? Okay, next up, Mrs. Button Down Top. Um, button Down Top has collar. Again, with the easy rating, I don't know about a collar and a button placket with an easy rating. Uh, button down top has collar and sleeve variations. View A and B have balloon sleeves with elastic on cuffs. View A has round collar and optional waist darts. Optional waist darts, okay. Views B and C have pointed collars. View C is short sleeve. Okay, so initially I'm immediately frustrated because they have tucked this into the model. Like if I were selling an outfit, selling, I don't know, her jewelry, her haircut, her makeup look, whatever, that's, this is fine. I'm trying to sell a top here. So show me the top. I don't know how long it is. And I also don't know how wide it is. So, but this has a grown on sleeve. They made this out of an eyelet, which is kind of fun. Um, this very big balloon sleeve, which when your arm is down, kind of just looks like that. That's pretty cool. Then you have your collar without a collar stand. So I guess technically that's a little bit easier. Button front. What do we have? So there's the one she's wearing, I think. You can kind of get a sense of the volume there. It does have a bit of an A-line to it. Okay, so this is the one where you add the waist seam darts. These look like fish eye darts where they don't go all the way to the hem, right? So that's kind of fun. But again, technically you could just add this to any pattern. You can add a fish eye dart. I think I actually have a video on adding fish eye darts. I'm wearing like a little denim dress made out of a skirt, maybe. Um, anyways, so that will pull it in some, which is great for those of us who do not want all that extra volume. You will still have it through the shoulders, but not as much through the waist. And then this is the pointed collar without the waist darts. There's a little sleeveless version again with the pointed collar. 
Here's the back. There's no yoke, no anything, just a pretty straight back. I wonder if the back has the waist darts too. It does. Okay. All right. So, uh, chambray, cotton lawn, cotton blends, gingham, eyelet linen blends, poplins, and shirtings. Yeah, all of the sort of mid-weight, some structure to it, some structure to it, um, for to hold up the balloon sleeve, really. And also the collar and the button placket are all aided by that um, structure of the fabric. You need some buttons, elastic buttons, okay. Then we have 8 to 26. So this one goes higher on the plus size range, not as high on the petite range, and very roomy throughout. Um, does it have view A? No. I wondered if it had the difference in A's with the waist starts and without, but it does not. Um, and then for the largest size, it's going to take anywhere from one and a half yards for this guy all the way up to two and a half, two and, yeah, two and a half yards for the other versions. All right, now line drawing. So they have really made this optional by making both of these versions view A. Um, I don't know, I, hmm, do we need separate letters for this one? Probably not. But they could have just made it a separate view. I don't, yeah, I don't know the benefit of making it optional versus making it like a dedicated view. Maybe you would have to have separate pattern pieces and that would mean more tissue and then that's more costly for them. That's all I can really think of. Okay, now we have a baseball tee, sort of. A baseball tee with a sleeve. Okay, easy rating. Pullover crew neck tops have puff sleeves in four lengths and include drawstring and contrast variations. Drawstring? So it's like a baseball tee upon first look, but it's not a raglan. Most baseball tees, all of this is one pattern piece. This one actually has the seam here, but then you have a set-in sleeve with a little gather at the top. So it's kind of like a much more feminine, I guess, version of a baseball tee. I'm kind of here for this interpretation of it. I love a good t-shirt pattern with a twist. Again, it's basics with a twist, which I absolutely love. Okay, so here's the drawstring version. This is super flattering if you have shorter legs because you have this scoopy hem here. This makes your leg look super, super long. Also great for those of us who are pear-shaped and you need like a little bit of extra... Not necessarily room, not ease, but you don't want to highlight the width of your hip. And so this gives the illusion that you're smaller, even though it's the hem of a top. Does that make sense? Um, super easy to do, that drawstring method too. So here's a short sleeve version, also really sweet. Great scrap buster, I'm assuming, right? If you just need a little bit for this and a little bit for the sleeves. It would also be cool to do like a sheer situation maybe, or maybe like a glitter situation, sequins, something like that. I do think that it still needs to be stretchy because this is made for knits, but you can have a lot of fun with this one. Stretch knits only, interlock jersey, rib knit, um, twill tape or ribbon for the drawstrings, or you could make it out of self fabric. Extra small to 2X, which translate to a bust of 30 and a half up to 48. And yeah, one yard plus the contrast, one and, oh, I can't read that, one and a bit for B and C as well. And then the bust has ease of anywhere from, well, it's like about four and a half Three and a half, four and a half inches. So not super fitted, even though it's a t-shirt. Line drawings. Cute, right? Basic with a twist, my fave. Okay. Next, here is our other Mimi G pattern. And there are two, ver two size versions of this. 
well, technically there's four size versions. There's four to 12, 12 to 20, and then the other one is gonna have what I'm assuming is 20 to 28, and then maybe like 28 to, I don't know what. We'll look at it here in a second. But it is a hoodie and the leggings, so it's a whole little athleisure set. Oversized stretch knit hoodie view A has stitched hem sleeves and kangaroo pocket. That's this version. View B and C have cutouts on the side. View B is oversized with sleeves untucked. Sleeves untucked. What are they normally tucked into? View C is oversized with tucked back sleeves. Only the backs are tucked? That's confusing. Certainly the wording on that is messed up, right? View D is leggings with front and back center seams, invisible zipper on the side. Okay, the, I mean, is that really a legging then if you have a closure? <laughs> leggings to me are just slip on. If you have to zip it up, doesn't that make it pants? Stretchy pants? All right, so you've got a lined hoodie with drawstring, grown on sleeve, stitched hem, kangaroo pocket stitched hem. Pretty straightforward. The legging has this little opening in the front, super cute, and supposedly there's a seam going up the front of her leg as well. Does that also mean no side seam maybe? Oh, can we be able to tell here? Oh, here's the cutout. I really like the cutout. Again, leg lengthening, well, at least from the side. This must be what they mean by tucked sleeves. Just like folded under and then tacked down, tucked sleeve. I don't really know if that, well, does, uh, I don't know. <laughs> As a design choice, I'm like, does it make that big of a difference? I don't know. And then again, here's the legging. I can't really see on my computer, you know, black is hard to see if there is a seam, maybe? Maybe there's a seam there. I'm kind of getting a bit of a shadow. All right, there's the first one again. View from the back. What do we think about it being so tight, 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 and then like these little baby flares <laughs> from the ankle down? Maybe if, I think they're a little bit long on her. She does like things that truly sweep the floor. Um, I don't know. I do like this a lot. A lot, a lot. All right, there's that. And then stretch knits such as fleece, ponty. This is for the top. Fleece, ponty, scuba, sweatshirt, fleece, and double knit. And then the pants are ponty, double knit, or interlock. I imagine, depending on how stretchy your fabric is, you could just omit the zipper, right? So long as they pull on. I mean, hers look very fitted. Um, twill tape or cording for the drawstring. And then three invisible zippers for the pants. Three invisible, what? How, um, what? That's gotta be a typo. Uh, four to 20 on this, we already went over that. Here are your body measurements. One-ish yards for the hoodies and two-ish yards for the leggings. Very roomy bust, the hip is gonna be negative ease, very close fitting. Actually, it's a one-to-one. -one. There is no ease, no negative or positive. So then if you fit the pattern exactly, like your body measurements are exactly this, maybe you would need the zipper to hold you into it. Yeah, I don't know. All right, line drawings. Yeah, really simple on the top. I like this a lot. Okay, here's one zipper and no other zippers. Oh, this is a zipper. These are zippers. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I was like, how are you gonna have two side zippers and a center back zipper? Like, what the heck? <laughs> I thought it would be like a flower like blooming as you're coming out of your pants. Okay, no, ankle zippers. Okay, that makes a lot, a lot, a lot more sense. All right, cool. Let's look at the um, other sizing. 
So that one went up to a 20. This one goes 20 to 28 and then 30 to 38. So there you have it. Same exact options, same line drawing, same everything. Yep. And we can look at some of the pictures of this model. There's that tucked sleeve again. I guess it gives it a little bit more of a relaxed vibe, but again, super flattering. And hers has a lot less of like a flary situation. So her pants seem to be a little bit more loose fitting than Mimi's do, right? Even here, I see like full on ease. Now that might be because they, again, I don't know if they make her make one size without any grading or alterations or anything, but that might be because to fit her hip, the thigh, knee, calf, all of that had to be a little bit bigger. But I kind of like it loose fitting too. It definitely gives more of that pant vibe, but still close fitting, you know. Here you can see it really well. Oh, well, there actually seems to be like a lot of issues going on here with the length. But again, if they don't let her, and there is a side seam, if they don't let her make alterations, then you know what she's supposed to do. Okay. All right, cute. Like that little outfit. Next, we have a, <laughs> a Mrs. and Women's Knit Sports Bra Leggings and Bike Shorts by Madeline Intimate. So you might know Madeline. She makes um, bras and under underwear. She has her own pattern line, but she also does patterns every once in a while for simplicity. And this one, she's opted to do like an athletic situation. So Sleek, stylish sports bralette comes with matching leggings and bike shorts. Bralette features a high neckline with angular princess seams that give a feminine, futuristic look. Yes, I get that. Leggings and bike shorts have contoured waistband. Love that. They're very high rise, so it is going to kind of scoop down a little bit when you have that contour. And crotch gusset, so you can actually move around in them. Shorts feature mesh cutouts. Okay, so here's the sports bra, high neckline. Can you really just pull this on and off? There's no zipper or anything. I know a lot of those um, Victoria's Secret ones have the zipper up the front. Can you really just, this just fits over your head? I guess it depends on the stretch of the fabric, but then here are the pants. Just your very typical legging. Looks very ready to wear, right? Very Fabletics. Um, <laughs> this pose, I can't get over it, but here's the shorts with the mesh cut out. Um, I also think you could do the, instead of the white, they could have done mesh here, right? I don't think that would show too much. Like her bust apex is here. That might've been cool, but maybe there's something with the structure of this that wouldn't allow you to do that. Maybe that's all I can think. And then there's the back. Yeah, there's literally no zipper or anything. I guess you just yank it on and off. Good fit. Everything looks totally fine through all the fit of the of the pant, of the legging. Front cover, back cover. Um, wow, this is small. Lycra knits, four-way stretch knits, athletic spandex knit fabrics. And then fold over elastic and elastic again. Different quantities for the different sizes. We have extra small to 1X, which is kind of surprising. She's, Madeline's really kind of made a name for herself in terms of inclusivity, not just in sizing, but also diversity among um, like disability and uh, race and everything. So I'm kind of surprised just to see it only go up to an XL here. Um, okay, there's your fabric requirements, body measurements. This whole thing just looks a little bit different than all the other back patterns. But you should have plenty of negative ease in both of these pieces, I would think. Uh, body measurement. Oh, we're only getting a waist and a hip. We're not even getting a bust measurement. That's weird. Oh, wait, JK, it goes up to 5X. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I was like, wait, I know Madeline, I, couldn't, I can't imagine her being okay with it only going up to XL. But yeah, so extra small to XL in one envelope and then 1X to 5X in another envelope. 
Now, we do not get pictures of them in this larger size range, which, you know, that's, I guess that's a, a downside to this one particular listing, but it is offered. So I guess we have to be happy with that, right? Okay, now we have this top no, no. You guys, no, no. <laughs> oh, we have really, really, really just gone for it. Okay, so Mrs. Crochet and so top, jacket and bag. I know that a Notions and Yarn Company owns the big four now, but never in my wildest dreams did I think that they would try and cross promote each thing. This is a top jacket and bag where you sew part of it and then you crochet part of it. So those of you that know how to do both, I need to know if you think this is really cool or not. I do not know how to do any needlework. So is this pattern going to teach me how to do that? Easy fitted, easy fit, cropped pullover top. That's true. At least you don't have to worry about fitting. Below hip length kimono style jacket and roomy shoulder bag. <laughs> Have crochet granny squares. I'm assuming granny is not a derogatory term here. It's actually meant to describe the squares. Again, I know nothing about crochet. Um, forming sleeves and band embellishments, complete instructions to crochet and attach granny squares included. Okay, so supposedly I can learn how to crochet from this sewing pattern. Really? And then it comes to, <laughs> do I want to crochet, to learn how to crochet to make this? Um, it's kind of weird. like a linen, like almost burlap muslin looking body. And then you add these very voluminous, probably really stiff and structured sleeves, right? Like crochet is not lightweight or drapey. Okay. The top is better. I don't know though. Is that, if I showed up to... I don't know, lunch or was making a target run as I like to call out for my, like, <laughs> is this outfit too much for target? If I, sh I guess people probably would think that was pretty cool. I don't know though. It is very trendy, the whole crochet thing, but couldn't we have done, so oh, man, it, it feels like the crochet trend is trendy, but this look this top, that jacket for sure, not, not it. Here's the bag. And there's a virgin without the crochet sleeves. Oh, but it, it goes straight up the back. Okay. It looks like she took like a table runner and stitched it onto her jacket. I think that the crochet thing is cool, right? I like the trend a lot. I just think this is not, this is missing the mark. Her hair is cool. Yeah, I know that's a no. Oh my word. Okay. Here's the back. Um, cotton types, linen types for A, B, C, and D. Okay. The top and jacket also in Shally and silky types, and jersey, and double knit? Do we really think that that can hold the weight of crochet? B, the bag, no, B, the jacket. D, sorry, D, the bag, is also in twill, chintz, and denim. And then the lining for the bag is cotton. And then, obviously, since you're crocheting, you need to buy a size G crochet hook, medium or worsted weight yarn, Okay, but how much? And weren't there like multiple colors? Wouldn't you need a bunch of different kinds? 
So already I'm not feeling super confident that this is really going to teach me how to crochet. Um, and then bias tape for the jacket. I guess the neckline maybe. Maybe also the hem. This comes in sizes extra small to extra large. <laughs> and then here's your fabric requirements for the bag and then finished garment measurements. Yeah, I guys, I don't know. If you crochet, please chime in. Please let me know your opinion on this. Is it cool? Are you happy to see this? Is it like, yay, I can combine two of my hobbies into one? Or is it like, no, they need to stay separated? <laughs> oh, okay, now we have, what is this? Petty skirt in sizes extra large to extra, extra small to extra large. Why do we have the sizes in the listing title? Hair accessories and purse. Mid calf flared petty skirt, which is a, it's like an undergarment, right? Like it's not meant to be worn as a regular skirt. Oh, designed for layering. Okay, has ribbon tied waistband, hem ruffle, and ribbon and lace trims. Again, this just feels like a ploy to sell more ribbon and trimming. Headscarf and hair tie are elasticized. There's even more of their other product. Lined purses with zipper or flap closures with ribbon have assorted handle straps and embellishments. I mean, so, okay, forgive me for not knowing this already, but a petty skirt is meant to act like a slip or is it meant to act like crinoline where it adds fullness? Like what, what is the point of it? Warmth? Is it supposed to make you warmer? Um, let me know what the point of it is. Like, why do I need one of these? And then secondly, I guess it's cute enough. I mean, it looks like what you see, like, in the movies when people are from that era are, like, undressing and they are wearing all of those undergarments they used to wear. It looks like that. This, what, I don't even know. Like, what are we, what are we doing with this? Nobody's wearing bananas like that. Plus, didn't they say this had elastic underneath it? Like, we're not milking cows. I mean, maybe some of you are, in which case you definitely need a custom handmade headscarf. But for the rest of us, I, yeah, I just don't know. She seems very unhappy. I don't blame her. Um, okay, now we have a scrunchie with long rabbit ears. There's free tutorials for this all over the internet. You do not need a pattern for that. We have this bag, which, okay, fine. Um, okay, this bag, um, which I guess has a bit of like, uh, pick, pick stitches, hand stitching here. They probably want you to make these flowers out of felt yourself, make the bow yourself. I don't even know what this is. That's just ugly. And then this rope um, strap. I mean, the size is kind of cute, I guess, but it looks like she like went into her little sister's, like her eight-year-old little sister's closet and was like, I need a bag real quick. Oh, okay. And then she went into her 12-year-old little sister's closet and got this one. Where you literally probably do this needlework, don't you think? Like, you cross-stitch this and then attach it. And doesn't it seem, like, weird and crooked? Is this twill tape? I'm so upset. <laughs> I am just so upset. This ribbon, like, what? Like, okay, so... It's just open in the back. Okay, and then you, it ties here. That's fine, but then when you go to put on your actual skirt, do you only wear this with dresses? Because if you had an actual skirt, wouldn't this show or at least be uncomfortable with that knot there? I need answers. I feel like we are being duped into buying all of the other brand's stuff. Because there is literally one skirt pattern here. Well, you're not getting anything over on me, that's for sure. Okay, here's your pattern back. I'm not even going to go over it. You just kind of scroll slowly. Look at all of this. Look at all of this. Because remember in the past how they've had like 
the a little link to the buttons, you know, like, you know, bu buy buttons for this pattern here. Here's the link. That was a little bit much, but okay, fine. This, all right, well, that's that. Please don't give me another one of these. I will just lose it. Oh, good grief, what is this? Okay, um, Children and Mrs. Dress by Elaine Heigl. You know what these girls need? That headscarf. <laughs> Cottage Core, which I kind of thought we were moving away from that. Okay. Uh, prairie dress. Yeah. Full on prairie dress has buttoned placket, stand collar, ruffles inserted into front and back princess seams, back tie ends, and three quarter length puffed tapered sleeves finished with ruffles. Wow. Full skirt gathers from waistline seam to mid calf with lower ruffle. I mean... Nothing about it is, like, offensive. It certainly looks more appropriate on the child than I think it does the woman. But that's, you know me, I'm, I love a ruffle, okay? I love a ruffle, a gather, a bow. I'm here for all of it. This just feels like too many of those things. So imagine this dress, sleeveless, for example, where you just have the little bib thing and a little gathered tiered skirt. Cute. Imagine it maybe with the sleeve, but without this ruffle. Or with the sleeve, but omitting the sleeve ruffle. Right? It just doesn't feel very mature or... It almost looks like a costume. It could go costume super easily. But I mean, here's the star, right? Look at that face. What a doll. Literally, she looks like a doll. So cute. And then here's her mother, sister. There's the bow in the back. You know what this reminds me of? Wasn't the show called The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt where she was like locked in a bunker for her whole life and didn't like watch movies or TV or have any interaction at all and she broke free and then was like trying to like acclimate to living in New York City? This is what they wore in the bunker. <laughs> Oh gosh, yeah, fabric hog at four and some odd yards of fabric for the adult, the largest adult version, which they're all alphanumeric because I guess the waist tie provides the cinching you need there and then everything else is pretty loose fitting. So fabrics, cotton broadcloth, calico, gingham, chambray, flannel, corduroy, and linen types. I don't know, guys. Let's look at the line drawings. Yeah, again, it has potential. Maybe even if you left all the details in, but these were like eyelid? Oh, God, is that better or worse? I don't know. Don't come for me. I'm trying here. <laughs> Or maybe if they, like, styled it with it unbuttoned. I don't know. All right. Now we've got a vintage, well, I was going to say pajamas, but that second one looked like full-on outfit. This one. Like, she's going somewhere. Oh, here's another one. Yeah, she's like a working woman in the 80s. Oh, but it's 1940s loungewear. Why does she have high heels on? <laughs> does the yellow... Yeah, she has little slides on with heels. What about the first one? They're all wearing high heels. What is up with that? Button front, hip length tops with pointed collar. Options include short straight sleeves or long sleeves gathered into snap closed bands. That's kind of cool. Um, and matching tie belt. Easy full length pants. Easy? Full-length pants have front and back pleats, side opening with snaps, and waistband with button closure. I mean, that is some fancy loungewear. <laughs> it is like pants. It is like a regular outfit. Like, I can see how she may be hanging out at home. What is this, like, 
the outfit in between pajamas and your regular clothes? Like you get your hair and makeup done, but apparently put your shoes on, and then like walk around in this for a little while before you put on your actual 1940s outfit? Like she has a meeting, right? And she has a handkerchief and everything. Like she's she's going to go meet somebody. She has a date. This one is going to the office. That's odd. Like they tucked it in. All of this is inside her pants. I don't know. I'm not buying that one. I'm I'm here for like the interesting vintage take on what life was like back then. This loungewear? I don't know. I don't know. Oops. Okay. The back looks like so. Oh, there is like a yoke in the back with some gathers. <laughs> Silky types, charmeuse, satin, chalet, cotton types, and linen types. All right. I mean, at least as recent as a couple years ago, pajamas going out was like a thing. Um, so maybe that's why they pulled this one out of the archives because they saw that too. But are people still doing that? And that was also like very specific amount, very specific type of person. Like Kim Kardashian, Gigi Hadid. Like I'm not going to Target in a silky loungewear set. I don't know. Okay. Six to 22. Of course, there is like <laughs> somewhat full size range for this. Um, wow. Okay. For the top and pants through almost four yards of fabric. And then when you include the belt, it's over four yards. So there's that. It does have plenty of ease in the bust and hip. So the waistline of the pant is really the only fitted part. Okay, well, that's that. Okay, oh, wait, hold on. There's another page. What do we have here? Okay, we're going into accessories now, which I'm not going to review, but we have this bag, very reminiscent of the Stony Clover with the patches. We have a, what is that? Uh, is that a Ninja Turtle? That green one? And then this is... Yoda backpack, kind of cool. We've got a men's knit top vest and hat. So they got a bucket hat, a vest with actually really cool pockets. Hold on, let me look at this one. Relaxed utility vest, had zipper front pocket details, back yoke, and is lined to edge. Crew neck tee, includes longer short sleeve options. Bucket hat has optional top stitching. I like these pockets. You have your patch pocket with the flap, but then these. I mean, imagine all the dog treats you could fit in here. Or kids, like, you could fit a whole diaper bag. Like, diapers in here, wipes in here. Be ready to go. Um, it also has a curved hem, which is kind of cool. There's your, the t-shirt, short sleeve t-shirt. There's the vest and the hat. There's the back of the vest with the back yoke. Yeah, not bad. Then we have scrubs. Unisex knit scrubs. Is that a thing? Knit scrubs? I don't work in the healthcare industry. The vest looks kind of cool here, even for like normal. But then on her, it's like, no. <laughs> something happened this is kids clothes kids costume stop look at the bunny rabbit and the dog okay this one I would wear as a costume can't be that hard to make right it's like a tool circle skirt that fits at your upper bust and you throw on some ribbon trim for the straps and make a little face. I could do that. Look at the pumpkin. Look at the hat. 
Oh, God. Oh, a witch. Okay. Uh, what is she? Like a candy something? Ghost witch lollipop. She's a lollipop, naturally. Look how cute. I do want to see these hats. Oh, it looks like a headband with ribbon. See, now this is doing technically the same thing as those other patterns did in selling us the accoutrement that go with it, but it feels less forced, and that's not fair, and I know that. I'm contradicting myself, and I know that. <laughs> but maybe because it's a costume, it's a little bit more expected, and it's not like clothing. But look at this little headband with a hat on it. I mean, get this and make it out of fun party fabric, and then you have like birthday hats. And then this one has a sweet little floral something. Don't be surprised if you see me running around in this this holiday season. It's so cute. Then we have dolls with no faces. That's creepy. We're going to keep it moving from there. You have a basket bag, fabric basket. Plush pumpkin animals. Okay, those are actually really cute too. This is a woman's costume, kind of witchy. And then Little Red Riding Hood, I guess. And then some cosplay stuff. Look at that. Sexy. And then this little, uh, what is that, Medusa with the snakes in her hair? Elvira, maybe? I'm bad at these uh, characters. And then you got this guy. So fun. Those are the Halloween costumes. Go check those out on your own if you're looking to make yours this year. And that is Simplicity Fall <laughs> 2022. I was hoping to see the lookbook. Is it a catalog? Order your own complete catalog to view at your leisure on your own time. $30? I don't know. $5 maybe. But this is, I think, our new version of the lookbook. What do we think? I think we started out really strong. Like a lot of these dresses are good. This one I think came from the summer collection. Um, I did like this from Mimi G for sure. But yeah, the dresses are really where they shined this season in my opinion. But let me know what you thought. Let me know which patterns you'll be picking up. Um, I think there's this, if you're watching this in real time, Friday the 23rd, um, I think there's a sale, a simplicity sale going on at Joanne right now, and they'll match that at Hobby Lobby. So leave your comments in the comment section below. Otherwise, that's going to do it for me, y'all. I will see you all very soon. Bye.